Alright guys, this is another installment of The Field Going. This is DK. What episode is this? That's right guys, it's episode 2. And we're back and we got a lot to cover. And we got only a little bit amount of time before uh, Discord doesn't let me up to quit load this. So, let's talk real quick guys. We're going to run through the offseason. We're going to run through the draft. We're also going to run through the preseason as well. We're going to do a little bit of everything, all right? So first things first, we're going to talk about the signings in the offseason. First signing up is going to be Kyle Rudolph. That's going to really help Russell Wilson bounce back from a subpar year for him. Give him that security blanket he's been needing, especially with all the high-powered defensive lines here in the league. We really needed someone that can just go out and catch the ball. He's not going to you know, burn somebody over the top, but he's definitely going to be able to catch all those 50-50 balls. You're going to be able to catch really anything thrown his way. It's a great pickup. Don't know why the Vikings didn't re-sign him. They might have a younger tight end that they like better. Who knows? Who knows? Next signing up, bringing back Russell Okung. Russell Ochung, I'm going to tell you this right now. I don't know how to pronounce name, so get over it. Ha <laughs> ha. So, the Seahawks are bringing this man back. Had a good little run there in Seattle first time round. Left because of contract dispute and also because of injuries. Didn't want to bring him back. They also brought in Dwayne Brown to replace him. Dwayne Brown retired and now they're bringing him back on a one-year deal. The reason why one-year deal is going to be discussed a little bit later. But for now, welcome back, Russell. Oh, well, Russell too, at least. <laughs> Next signing up, don't know why they brought this cancer to the locker room. Look at this man. Tell me you don't hate this man when you look at his face. Ricky Incognito. No idea why this man is still in the league. No idea why teams are still giving him a chance. He's mean. He's racist. Now that I think about it, he's probably the perfect old lineman. Oh, well. Well, they needed a left guard. They went ahead and drafted one, which we'll also get down to a little bit later. But... They did not think, at least on my belief, they did not think that he would fall to him, which is why the Ricky Incognito signing looks a little worse with hindsight. Moving to the defensive side of the ball, they brought in another Viking, former Viking rather, Everson Griffin. Man was a beast with the Vikings, really held down the defensive line, and since the defensive line played a little bit under what many expected them to last year in Seattle. This is a great signing. This is really going to help them. And can't say anything more. This man's a beast. They signed Jimmy Smith later on in the preseason, bringing him in for a slot corner role. Was cut by the Ravens not too long ago. So, not that bad of a signing in my book. This man can catch all the balls thrown his way. So, look out, quarterbacks. Sean Davis from the Pittsburgh Steelers brought in to create a little competition with Bradley McDougal because I feel, based on this signing alone, that they don't really like Bradley McDougal. And there's little whispers here throughout the league that he is available, that he is on the chopping block. And with this signing of Sean Davis, it's, should, it's no longer whispers. The Seattle Seahawks are bright and clear. Get Bradley out of Seattle. Oh, and the signing of the offseason, by far the biggest get by the Seattle Seahawks. They have been missing their dirty, hard-hitting, strong safety ever since the retirement of Cam Chancellor. And they went on ahead and got an absolute slugger, an absolute steal from the Oakland Raiders, Carl Joseph. This man is going to sniff out balls and intercept them. This man is going to sniff out ball carriers and attack them. This man is going to make wide receivers fear for their life if they dare, if they absolutely dare to go over the middle. And with that, and the signing of Sean Davis as well, boom squad, baby. If you throw over the middle on this team, you damn well better hope nobody's around you because you're going to get absolutely slammed into Bobby Wagner. Carl Joseph, Sean Davis, Macau Kendricks now, he can hit. Uh, KJ Wright, he can hit. The defensive line is filled with Jadavion Clowney, Snacks Harrison, Everson Griffin now. Jerron Reed can hit. 
where where are you gonna throw the ball and not fear for your life? This team is this team on the defensive end is mean, which <coughs> is gonna be mean when it needs to be. Sorry, one more second. Sorry, I was dying. Anyways, this team is going to be mean when it needs to be. This mean this team is going to get turnovers when it needs to. This team is going to put the fear back into Seattle. Finally. You love to see it. Boom squad. Boom squad. Now on to the draft. They drafted left tackle Liam Eckenberg out of Notre Dame. This man is going to hold down the, the blindside spot. For a couple years, hopefully. At least that's what the front office thinks. We can only hope. This man what didn't do like lights out at Notre Dame. And offensive linemen, especially from Notre Dame. Light and, light and night. Day and night. Day and night. They went on ahead and drafted Trey Smith. He had a basketball game. Well, this man, they didn't think... I don't... Based on how they drafted, I don't think they believed he would fall to them, especially with their limited draft capital. So this was an absolute steal, an absolute get. Great job. And in the late round, late fifth round, they drafted <laughs> Brian Lewerk. And this is just a little screen grab for my alma mater. Not really alma mater, still going there. Gold Devils, ASU baby, forks up. Uh, but they drafted in the fifth round Big Ten quarterback Brian Lewerk out of Michigan State. Had an okay career there at Michigan State. Lost twice. That's right. Twice to Pac-12 team ASU. Just had to put that little blurb in there. Go Pac-12. Better than the Big Ten. Better than the Big 12. Get them in the league, please. All right. And with that, they also moved on to the captains. Sorry about that. I was reading the script. SI scriptus. But we're moving on to the captains now. So with the captains, they announced right after cuts. No surprise, Russell, Russell Wilson making his return as a captain for the Seattle Seahawks. Big surprise, adding tight end Kyle Rudolph and making him a, tight, uh, a captain right away. Beautiful. Love to see it. No complaints about this man. He was an absolute stand-up guy in, in Minnesota. And hopefully they can he can do the same thing here in Seattle. We love to see it. New guys coming up big. On the defensive side of the ball, no surprise, Bobby Wagner. Hopefully he retires a Seattle Seahawk. You would love to see that, especially with Seattle's uh, known disposition to trade off its aging superstars. I, we here at the field goal hope to God he does not get traded in the later years of his career. Love to see him retire Seahawk. Love this man. Can't say anything more bad about him. Jadavion Clowney being made a defensive captain. Second year in the Seattle system. Starting to understand it a little bit more. Being trusted to be a defensive captain. Not going to quite have the headset. That's still going to belong to Bobby Wagner. But he's going to be able to make all the defensive line shifts there. And it's great to see that Seattle is trusting him with this responsibility. And the next man up. Traded to the Seattle Seahawks this last offseason and being immediately made a captain based on his skill, based on his playing years so far. This man is a beast. We can't wait to see him for real in a Seattle Seahawks jersey. God, we can't wait for this defense to get on the field and put the fear into the NFC West, put the fear into the NFL itself. All right, well, that was about it. On news from the Seattle Seahawks we're gonna move on to the league now and we're gonna move on to everybody's favorite segment or soon to be favorite segment chicken of the week now I can't really give it for one week I'm gonna give chicken for the whole offseason draft and preseason so this is just gonna be a combined chicken of 2020 and there is no bigger chicken, no bigger loser than this team right here. 
especially after losing one of their young players for the year. <laughs> That's right. The chicken of the weeks, I should say, unfortunately, is the Indianapolis Colts. How are you going to sign your quarterback, rather, re-sign your quarterback to a lucrative contract for all those years and then turn around and draft with your high pick a QB out of Alabama to a, and then not get him the protection he needs in order to keep him healthy and watch as he gets injured and is out for the year. That's right, folks. Tua is gone for the year. You hate to see young players go down, especially QBs, especially players from the SEC, which, you know, is just bumping up the Pac-12 just a little bit because how are you going to trust SEC players if they're all going to get injured and if they're all going to underperform? Now, unfortunately, you don't love to see, rather, you hate to see young players get hurt especially quarterbacks, so this is a real big loss for the coach, especially since Tua and Jacoby Brissett were both battling for the starting position, and now it looks like Jacoby is going to end up becoming the starter there in the Indianapolis, and that's not too much of a drop-off, but again, how are you going to sign someone to such a lucrative contract and not make him the outright starter and then turn around to draft a QB? You just, you hate to see it. You hate to see it. Sorry, Annapolis. Welcome to the chickens. Was that the end of the show? Uh, I know I really rushed through it. Oh, wow. It's really pouring down here in Seattle. Sorry about that, everybody. One second. Well, yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that rundown. Uh, I'm really trying to get the inner workings of running a podcast type thing. Um, this was really my first attempt at it, so this is my second episode. I'm going to try and tune th some things up, and then next week I'm going to come back harder and better. And just like I, just, as you just heard, it's raining here in Seattle, so we got to fly up out of here. The field goal is in and out, and it's good. <laughs>